assalam alaikum dear students i am your teacher dr khuram shehzad and today we should talk about conversation analysis in my last lecture i talked about the difference between spoken and written discourse and we discussed at length different kinds of differences and uh, we also said that there are no hard and fast rules okay though we did talk about uh lexical density grammatical intricacy nominalization grammatical metaphor okay spontaneity repetitions and hesitations and on the basis of this we discuss the difference between spoken and written discourse then we talked about e discourse and monologue and dialogue and things like these our today's lecture that is lecture number 2 and then lecture number 3 as well uh will be about conversation analysis okay and uh, let's talk about what brian paltrow has to say about conversation analysis conversation analysis is an approach to the analysis of spoken discourse that looks at the way in which people manage their everyday conversational interactions so we are going to understand that how people they manage their everyday conversations it examines how spoken discourse is organized and develops as speakers carry out these interactions so in my last lecture as uh, one of the you know linguists said that spoken discourse is not organized if it is not organized how can we understand each other so it is very much organized that is why brian paltrow when he discusses conversation analysis he says that we are looking at we are examining we are analyzing that how spoken discourse is uh, is organized and speakers they carry out these interactions conversation analysis has examined aspects of spoken discourse such as sequences of related utterances called also called agency pairs preference organization for particular combination of utterances also called preference organization turn taking feedback repair conversational openings and closings discourse markers and response tokens <coughs> so it means that we are going to talk about what is conversation analysis we will be studying in these two lectures lecture number 2 and 3 little bit about the historical background of conversation analysis then we will talk about that how conversation is sequenced how do people open conversation how do people close conversations what is turn taking what is preference organization what is agency pair what are discourse markers okay and uh, of course we will talk about the steps that we use okay in order to analyze conversation so let's talk about you know its history conversation is an exchange of thoughts and ideas between two or more people a conversation occurs when people cooperate with each other in order to introduce and sustain a single focus of attention by taking turns with each other okay so let's talk about its background its history you know conversation analysis started in the 1960s and 70s okay and it was garfinkel and goffman who were basically psych uh, sociologist and they started to work on conversation analysis so conversation analysis started with the examination of telephone calls made to los angeles a suicide prevention center this work then continued with the examination of more ordinary telephone calls and conversations and has since been extended to include spoken interactions such as doctor patient consultations legal hearings news interviews teacher student conversation okay uh, conversations which are happening inside the court room and classroom conversations as well 
conversation analysis takes less of a linguistics view of spoken discourse than some other forms of discourse analysis it is because it is coming from sociologist so it takes a social view of the language if you remember we talked about different kinds of definitions of discourse analysis and one of the definition of discourse analysis uh, was going beyond the sentence meaning moving beyond the linguistic aspects of the you know discourse and looking at the other aspects of discourse the social aspects of discourse like ideology like identity like gender issues okay and uh, other issues which come which we come across when we are analyzing discourse so next topic that you know conversation analysis brian paltry discusses is issues in conversation analysis so simply talking about them you know issues in conversation analysis we have just said that conversation takes less of a linguistic view it focuses on the conversation which is happening between two people or more than two people when we carry out research you know in linguistics in educational linguistics applied linguistics we collect the data in the form of interviews we collect the data in the form of uh you know questionnaires or we have got let's say the speech of somebody of a politician or of a you know scholar and uh, the we we get textual data and then we analyze that conversation uh, we analyze that interview or questionnaires but in conversation analysis we do not have interviews we do not have uh, questionnaires we do not have you know uh, the textual uh, data in the form of speeches but what we have we have got the conversations of the people conversation which is happening between the teacher and the student conversation which is happening between the doctor and the patient conversation which is happening between the lawyer and the judge that is why these are some of the issues in conversation analysis and people have raised you know problems and they say that this the, these are some of the limitations these are some of the problems in conversation analysis let's read what you know uh, brian paltry has to say a further key feature of conversation analysis is the primacy of the data as the source of information analyses thus do not incorporate speakers reflections on their interactions because spoken language is spontaneous we are interacting two people are interacting one is saying hello how are you and the other one says i am fine how are you and then they come to the topic and they come to the issue for example there there is a discussion there is there is a conversation between between the teacher and the student and student has got a problem with the assignment so of course after this interaction the student comes to the point and he talks about the assignment so here what kind of reflections we can have okay during the conversations so when it comes to interviews or questionnaires or let's say if it is an open ended questionnaire uh, you know question is given and in, you know uh, the questionnaire the respondent takes the questionnaire home and he has time to reflect to think about a question and then write down the answer but in spoken discourse because it is one on one face to face conversation we do not reflect a lot no doubt we reflect but the different kind of reflection is not there as we have in writing skills for example you are supposed to write you write you rewrite you think you rethink you manage your ideas okay analysis thus do not incorporate speakers reflections on their interactions field notes or interviews as ways of gathering information about the discourse in view of conversation an analysis the use of this kind of data represents idealizations about how spoken discourse works and is thus not valid data for 
analysis. So these are, you know, some of the issues that people have raised in conversation analysis. But then the, uh, the, the, the conversation analysts, they have given the answers to these issues as well. Let's move to the next thing that we do in conversation analysis. For example, we collect the data of conversation analysis with the help of videos, with the help of audio or video recordings. As this recording is being made, so this is a kind of data which is being collected, which will be shared with you people later on. Okay, so in conversation analysis, two interactants, whether there is a teacher or a student, lawyer or a judge, or any two people, okay, they are interacting on a particular topic. And then having taken their permission, which is very important, you record the data and then you collect the data. And then that data is analyzed, okay, to see that how different kinds of issues they are being raised, how different kinds of issues they are being, you know, kept hidden, how different kinds of, you know, ideologies they are being displayed, and how different kinds of ideologies they are being concealed. So the analyst, he has got, you know, the perspective. And from that perspective, he analyzes the data. If your perspective is to look at the sequence of the interaction, for example, opening of the conversation, closing of the conversation, turn taking, that how these two people, they were taking turns. One person completed and then the other person started. Or is it that, you know, what I see, for example, one person is speaking and many people, they start to speak. So to find out the behavior of the people, that how they are taking turns, how they are giving flow to the other person, how they are grabbing, you know, managing their flow, how they are keeping their flow, what kind of discourse markers are being used, how feedback is given to the other person. When there is a conversation, there are, you know, uh, uh, there are units, adjacency pairs. How are you? I am fine. This is called adjacency pair. Two turns will make one adjacency pair. How are you is first pair part and I am fine where which the other person says is the second pair part. So first pair part and second pair part will make one unit. Okay. So if you are going to analyze this, then your focus will be on sequence and organization of the conversation, which we will be talking about later on. So let's talk about now that you have got the data and that data, you know, it has to be transcribed. First of all, we call it transcription. Transcription means, you know, that writing word for word whatever the interactants have said. But if it is video recording, audio and video recording, so then you can, of course, see the non-verbal behavior of the people as well. Okay? In audio recording, it is difficult to look at the non-verbal communication. But once having taken the permission, if it is audio and video recording, so then you have got the non-verbal data as well. So first thing is transcribing and coding conversation analysis data. Okay, there are coding conventions that you can find on internet easily and in some of the books as well, like Jefferson, okay, he has discussed uh, transcription coding conventions. So you write word for word whatever the interactants they have said. And then you code it. You give it different kinds of symbols. For example, these are called transcription 
conventions like this this is a transcription of an extract taken from the movie sex and the city so brian paltry discusses you know the data and applies different kinds of conventions though these are the limited conventions but detailed conventions you can find on the internet internet so charlotte says you are getting engaged and you can see that there is an arrow here on engaged and the key is given here to understand that what is this arrow which is going upward shift into especially high pitch so it means there is a shift into especially high pitch and look at the word now which is written in bold letters for example here we are together now so again there is a stress on the word now for example he explains especially loud sounds relative to the surrounding talk so the talk which is coming before the word now and which is coming after the word now it is going normal but the word now is stressed then you can see charlotte says just say yes because they are talking about marriage and uh, in you know western culture people do not marry quite soon so it is a different culture and our culture is different culture okay here you know people <coughs> first they marry okay and uh, then they produce children but here the things are different so here if you are a girlfriend or a boyfriend okay relationship so as soon as you know you have this relationship you continue you continue for a long period of time you are not supposed to get married so that is why they are surprised the friend is telling and she is talking about her relationship with a boy and when she says that she is going to get married the other person the other friend okay she expresses her alarm her surprise and she says that uh, okay uh, she threw up she threw up it is not normal and if the person is okay is on his knees and he is saying that i am here for you and i propose you okay so she says that she is supposed to say yes so again you can see these four dots so these four dots show prolongation of the immediately prior sound then 0.5 gap time which is elapsed okay uh between the words when you are speaking and then now which is underlined it also shows stress and this you know sign it shows last utterances two utterances you know they come very close to each other so they are very much related and question mark shows rising intonation and dot shows falling intonation and this comma shows that unfinished intonational contour so these are called coding conventions you can find their detail on the internet or if you read okay jefferson jefferson has created these coding conventions so uh, i know you know these days we are not having one on one uh, classrooms face to face uh, classroom but usually uh, when i teach this subject i ask my students okay that they should make a recording of 2 to 3 minutes of any exchange which is happening between their friends okay or between anyone they should make a recording and they should try to apply these uh, transcription conventions so still i think uh, you can do this uh, task uh, so i would love that you should do it and then you should inform me okay once uh, we will be online and we will be having our classes online so i will be asking you about this and i will be giving the time to carry out this task as well so we should move forward and uh, our next topic is the you know sequence and organization or the structural organization in conversation so here we will talk about 
how do people they open their conversation how do people they close their conversation what kind of feedback they give and how do they give this feedback what is preference organization okay what is turn taking and how do people take turns how do people they hold the floor but here the data that we are having you know this data is coming from the foreign culture of course we can see that how we can analyze our data data which is coming in urdu language data which is coming in you know punjabi language so again we need to see that what kind of sequence we are having in our language and what kind of steps we have okay stages we have when we are opening up our conversation so that is very important not only just going through the book understanding the content okay which is discussed in the book it is very important that we should be able to apply the same kind of understanding on the kind of data that we are producing or that we are having in our language that is urdu language so let's read about you know opening conversations one area where conversation openings have been examined in detail is in the area of telephone conversations shaglov analyzed a large data set of telephone openings to come up with the following canonical opening for american private telephone conversations so this is canonical canonical means they have become part of the canon rules okay that everybody does it you take the data you explore the data you analyze the data and you come across the same kind of stages in the conversation so let's see there is a recipient okay and you can see that this recipient is making a telephone call okay and the telephone bell rings when it rings we can call it summons answer sequence when it rings we can call it summons answer sequence then there is a call uh, recipient hello caller hi ida identification recognition sequence so this is the second step which is happening over here caller hi this is carla hi this is carla this is greeting sequence recipient hi carla caller how are you how are you sequence recipient okay good recipient how about you caller fine don wants to know reason for call sequence so we have 1 2 3 4 and then fifth stage they are talking about the reason for making a call and there are four you can see stages okay when they make a call there is summon answer sequence identification recognition sequence greeting sequence and how are you sequence so same is the case you know in our urdu language if we analyze the data from our urdu language we need to understand okay so first of all for example when i make a call i always say assalamu alaikum so there is the bell rings that is summon answer sequence and instead of hello we, we have got assalamu alaikum then i say how are you aap kaise hain identification recognition sequence we try to understand usually when we know that who is making a call so we take the name of the person and in this way we come to know with whom we are talking and if there is some call from unknown number or i don't know so we always ask who is there kon baat kar raha hai main kis se baat kar raha hu so then there is how are you sequence that we also ask aap kaise hain and the answer comes ke main acha hu okay so then there is a reason for making a call so this is how uh, if we analyze okay opening conversation in urdu language i think we will be having the same four kind of stages that this data shows then brian paltrage you know he compares the data 
which is coming from Australia and the data which is coming from China and he tries to analyze that how or what kind of stages exist in their data. So we have read that in Chinese data okay uh, one stage is missing. In Chinese stage there is one stage that is missing. The recipient there is a ring, summon, okay recipient, way, hello and then caller, ching chong, identification, recipient, a, yes, recognition, okay. So we can see that there is no how are you sequence in the data which is coming from China, okay. Then there is another data, okay, from the radio call in program, okay, which is talking about that how people they open up their conversations. So again, here your task is to collect the data in Urdu language and see that how do people open up their conversations in Urdu language. Then we come to the closing conversations. Okay, closing the conversation in Urdu language is quite interesting. Okay, so we will be discussing that too. But first of all, let's read what Brian Paltry has to say. Shagloff and Sachs have also looked at conversational closings. This work has since been continued by Bhutan, who in his discussion of telephone closings points out that telephone closings usually go over four terms of talk. How many terms? Four terms of talk in their data, made up of pre-closing and closing moves. So in these four turns, there are pre-closing and, you know, closing moves. The pre-closing is often made up of two turn units consisting of items such as OK, All right, with falling intonation. This closing is made up of two further units such as Bye Bye and Goodbye. So OK, and then there is, you know, Bye Bye. And in Urdu we have Acha hai, Thik hai, and then we also say Allah Hafiz. Okay, and this is how we also close our conversations. But I still remember if we usually observe the females, okay, I should not say, <laughs> people may say that it, it has become a gender discussion, okay, but usually I have observed females when they are about to end the conversation, okay, they are moving towards the door and they keep talking and they keep on talking and the male member of the society, you know, sitting in the car outside the house and waiting for the rest of the family to come and they are standing in the doors and they are talking and their talk, you know, it does not end and person is waiting and, and you know, pressing the horn, okay, please, for God's sake, come back now, we are getting late but ladies they keep on talking and then sometimes you know when it is time they are saying Allah Hafiz bye bye still a new topic is being initiated they may remember something okay which they have not yet discussed while they were sitting in the drawing room of the house and now they feel that it is time to discuss that new topic so this is very interesting I would love that you should take some data from the end of the conversation okay and analyze that what kind of moves are there how many turns are there and do we have pre-closing and closing or not okay so let's read again the closing may also be preceded by a number of pre-sequences such as the making of an arrangement so we are making arrangement that when are you going to see us next time when are you coming to our home or will you be coming to a, their home okay again? When? So people have such type of questions. Referring back to something previously said in the conversation. They talked about something. Maybe they could not end their conversation. Now they remember that they talked about this thing but they did not finish it. So they are standing outside the door about to leave okay. And then they remember that they have not finished their talking. They they could not complete their you know conversation the initiation of a new topic so it means that even in american data 
such things happen which may not be responded to good wishes such as give my love to jane a restatement of the reason for calling and thanks for calling and you know this give my love to jane i remember when i was a child and i used to sit with my grandparents my maternal grandparents and they used to tell me stories and my grandfather who came from india okay he was a very learned person so he used to tell me that he used to write letters for them and he used to tell me that you know sometimes there were six i'm not against them but just for the sake of understanding i'm sharing this you know incident with you so they used to ask him that he should write a letter for them and it is it was their habit that they will take the name of each and every member of the house and they will ask specifically and they will tell specifically about that person usually we say you know that we all are happy and that's okay but they will take the name adnan theek hai imran theek hai amir ye kar raha hai asiya ye kar rahi hai they will talk about each and every person and then we used to laugh about you know uh, that uh, this is how they used to interact when they were writing their letters so give my love to jane it reminded me of this and we also do you know the same thing ke mera pyar flane ko bhi do mera pyar usko bhi dena ha us bacche ka bhi zikr aap karte hain you talk about each and every one okay related to you and you express your love for the people whom you really love so this is how you know people they are ending their conversations they are standing outside the house and they are talking about all these people so then sometimes however the closing may be foreshortened when the arch type closing is skipped over and foreshortened closing takes place equally the closing may be extended by continued repetition of pre closing okay 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 but after okay each okay there is new topic there is something new which is coming so pre closing is said many times okay such as bye bye love you love you and sleep well and then after sleep well you remember something else and you say it and then you say bye bye and you remember something else and then you say it so closings are thus arch type complex interactional units such as sensitive to speaker's orientation to continuing closing or not wanting to close the conversation okay this can be one of the reasons that we may have so many you know turns in closing the conversations now dear students you know we all do all these things but we may not have the realization that how do we open conversations and how do we close conversations and look at the discussion that this person has generated after studying the telephone calls which were made to los angeles okay a department suicide prevention department usually i pass comments okay when i am in the class about the suicide and online i would not like to say anything but you know in pakistan every day so many people they commit suicide think about them okay why do do they, uh, do they do this thing and why do we have such type of things in our society let's move to the next topic that is turn taking so like opening of the conversation closing of the conversation we have got turn taking let's read about turn taking and what he has to say you know brian poultry says in english culture usually one person speaks at a time and then when one person finishes the other person takes the turn and he or she starts to speak but when i analyze my situation okay the pakistani context we do take care of these things but sometimes i have seen in the classroom whenever i ask one person to speak okay people do not wait for their turn and one person has not just finished the other person starts to speak and it creates problems for us and sometimes you know it is very difficult to give the floor to the other person the same person wants to speak and he wants to say okay and usually you know we continue speaking when we say uh, uh, you know i i would love to and it means that you should wait 
ideas are coming let me think let me speak let me finish but usually do not pe people do not you know wait for the first person to finish and they start to speak so this is what jefferson okay or brian poultridge has talked about in you know turn taking so related to the turn taking is adjacency pairs adjacency pairs it is across cultures we are not going to talk about across cultures but we should talk about adjacency pairs we should know what are adjacency pairs when somebody comes to me and he or she says how are you and i say i am fine these two sentences they are called adjacency pairs because one utterance is followed by another utterance which is very much related dear students you know we have talked about pragmatics and sometimes you know we we do not have uh, related utterance we feel that it is not related but we need to think we need to understand because it is related i am busy sitting here doing my job and one of my colleagues you know he comes to me and he says uh, i'm going outside mr khurram would you like to eat something now he has not directly asked me to accompany him to go outside with him okay though he has asked me that he is going outside indirectly to eat something but i say oh thank you very much dear i have got some work to do and again you know i have not directly said no to him i have said that i am engaged i am busy i have got some important work to do so this is understanding pragmatically how language is being used in the social in the society and how with the help of this language you know we are creating we are generating we are enacting our relationship with the other person how discourse is being enacted it is being re represented it is being you know created so it seems to us that there is no adjacency pair when he says that would you, uh, i am going outside to eat something and i said that i have got some important piece of work to do again it is an adjacency pair at first it looks to us that it is not relevant but if we just think about it they are quite relevant okay so we need to understand that how adjacency pairs are made how they are created and then every culture you know it has its own rules it has its own uh, cultural ways of carrying out the discussion cultural ways of completing uh conversations cultural ways of accomplishing the goals so this is called adjacency pair and then in adjacency pair another related uh, uh idea concept is preference organization okay we have talked about that there are you know two utterances these utterances are put together and then we get adjacency pair and here for example a when a says are you going out with anyone at the moment this is a question okay and then b replies and when b replies this will become an adjacency pair and first pair is called first pair part and second is called second pair part and these two pairs when they are combined that is called adjacency pair and in adjacency pair you know we have got preference organization we have expectations with the people when we are interacting with them if i ask a favor from someone i feel that that person is going to give me that favor if i request someone i feel that this person will listen to me and he is not going to say no to me 
because the moment he says no i mind it i feel it so even if i don't express my feelings over there in my heart i will be thinking about it okay so preference organization is that what kind of second pair part you are expecting from the second person the person he came to me he was very clever he did not ask me directly let's go outside or would you like to go outside he wanted my company and my answer you know i also intelligently answered him by not saying no i did not say no i can't go with you but i said that i am busy or i have got some work to do some more important work to do so indirectly i answered him saying no okay but what he was expecting from me his preference was he wanted to listen yes from my side of course if he could have said something very important something you know very uh, significant i could have gone with him taking into consideration the situation in which he is then of course i could have changed my mind but his preference was that he wanted to hear yes from my side for example i give you one more example usually uh, and it is alhamdulillah i don't say that uh, i i always try that i should not ask anything from anyone if i have a car i should use my car if my car is out of order just i i i won't be asking my brother that you should share your car with me or you should give me your car no way so same is the case if somebody asks me some money for help you know his expectation is that he would love to hear yes from my side so we will call this is his preference organization and if i say yes he is getting his preferred answer and if i say no or sorry i cannot help you this is called this preferred organization and from this i just remember another incident which just happened yesterday night one of the students she made me a request that she needs my signature on the hard copy of her synopsis and she asked me sir could you please take out the you know prints of this synopsis and then you can put your signatures on them and then you can submit on my behalf so i categorically said no sorry it's not possible but you know his preference was that i should have said yes but i was thinking that this is not possible i don't have printer and you know it's busy schedule these days i am busy recording the lectures and busy performing my religious jobs as well fasting as well praying to allah almighty for the country for for myself okay so sometimes people you know they have too many expectations from you and their preferred organization is that you should say yes to them every time which is not possible so we need to understand that what is this and for this you know uh Brian Paltrow discusses very interestingly uh, you know preference organization and let's read it's interesting the basic rule for age sensitive pair then is that when a speaker produces a first pair part they should stop talking and allow the other speaker to produce a second pair part there is however a certain amount of freedom yes freedom is given because he first person does not know whether i will say yes or no so freedom is given to me i know unless there is an hod <laughs> talking about something or my boss talking about something where i cannot say no but usually you know people they have got the freedom freedom in responding to some first pair parts for example a compliment can be followed by an accept or a reject some second pair parts may be preferred and others may be dispreferred for example a question may be followed by an expected answer 
एक्सपेक्टेड आंसर इज द प्रिफर्ड सेकेंड पेयर पार्ट और अनएक्सपेक्टेड आंसर द डिस प्रिफर्ड सेकेंड पेयर पार्ट एक्सपेक्टेड आंसर इज कॉल्ड प्रिफर्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड अनएक्सपेक्टेड आंसर इज कॉल्ड डिस प्रिफर्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओके वेन दिस हैपन द डिस प्रिफर्ड सेकेंड पेयर पार्ट is often preceded by a delay yes we do think we are human beings we are thinking animals if i want to say no to somebody i will have to think i will have to see who is there can i say no to my father no way <laughs> he would not like to listen to this thing his expectation is to say yes to him all the time my boss would love to see that i should say yes to all the time okay and uh, teachers they also expect from the students that they should also say yes but when i am talking to my equal to my colleague then of course i know i can say no to him okay so when we want to say no so our second pair part is preceded by a delay number one tactics that we can use is delay a preface second is preface and third is an account account meaning story that you start telling a story so let's read this example now come back to the example in preference organization so a says are you going out with anyone at the moment it's a question but b you know b does not want to go with him or her so b what he or she does is that they have got three you know strategies to answer that person the first one we have talked about delay the second one is a preface and third one is an account so b says ah oh, ah oh. so delaying well kind of well kind of is a preface there is someone i met a while back this is a story there is someone i met a while back so it has got nothing to do with the question are you going out with anyone at the moment so instead of giving the answer the person has started to talk about the story actually i am getting married at the end of the year an unexpected answer okay so preference organization we have talked about that there are some preferred organization second pair parts and this preferred second pair part and then you know uh, brian poltrich has discussed on page 99 a very good table okay and under this table he says that what is the first pair part and in second pair part what is the preferred organization and what is the dispreferred organization so for example there is a request so preferred organization is that you should accept the request and dispreferred is that you should refuse the request offer accept so if you accept this is the preferred organization and if you refuse this is the dispreferred organization assessment either you agree with the assessment or you disagree when you agree this is preferred organization when you disagree this is dispreferred organization question expected answer preferred organization unexpected answer dispreferred organization blame now in blame you know it is the other way around preferred organization is that you will deny because if you accept the blame then the story is uh, story ends here so what you do is that in preferred organization we have blame denial and this preferred organization is admission when you accept your you know when you accept the blame so this is called preference organization and then he has discussed different kinds of examples so you should read these examples okay at home when you are free our next topic under structure of the conversation is feedback of course when we interact we want that the second person should give uh, give us feedback so that we should know that what we are saying uh, whether he or she is listening to it or not or whatever whatever we are saying whether he or she agrees to it or not okay so uh, these are the things that we are having 
and this is how we give feedback to the other person as well so let's read brian paltridge what he has to say on it another aspect of spoken interaction that has been examined by conversation analyst is the way speakers provide each other with feedback that is the ways in which listeners show they are attending to what is being said so for example when you are listening to me you are sitting in the classroom so your face your bodily gestures your facial expressions they tell me that where you stand whether you are getting me or not and the knowledge that i am you know imparting you are getting it or not or when you ask me a question i come to know about your feedback so feedback can be given through verbal as well as non verbal communication so here this can be done for example by the use of response tokens response tokens are words like mm mm acha in urdu language and i remember one of the students told me that in one of the uh, indian movies they have discussed almost 10 different uses of the word acha it means it has different meanings but we are giving the feedback by just you know nodding our head telling that i am listening to you and whatever you are saying yes i am getting you or through our eyes hmm or saying hmm or ya ja, or yes or in urdu we have theek hai acha hai so this is how we are giving the feedback by paraphrasing this is the another technique that we can use to give feedback by paraphrasing what the other person has just said or through body language or the use of eye contact so then he discusses that how feedback is being communicated here tadashi is you know using the word ja o and he is giving the feedback to the lecturer next topic is repair in conversation there are two kinds of repairs one is called self repair and the other is called other repair self repair is when i am speaking for example if i mispronounce a word so i come to know and i correct myself so that is self repair and other repair is when i am interacting with you and by mistake let's say i uh, you know make a mistake in the content and i take a wrong date instead of the right date when we all know for example when qaid azam the founder of pakistan was born okay i take the wrong date i tell the wrong date and you correct me or the place where he was born okay and you correct me so this is called other repair so this happens in our conversations that sometimes we make mistakes and we correct ourselves and when we correct ourselves this is called self repair and when the other person corrects me this is called other repair so let's you know read the example that brian poultridge has shared client says because he's got a girlfriend oh a woman ah so oh ah these are the you know words which are telling us that there is some mistake and this mistake is on the part of the speaker so it means that first he said girl and then he said no it's a woman you know so this is called self repair and in other repair here is another example barrister the twins michael and alan alan live with the wife michael is employed here as an apprentice butcher oh no or oh not michael alan it's not michael the second person says you have taken a wrong name it's not michael it's alan yes all right so this is called repair then there is another organization in our talk structure in our talk that is called insertion sequence insert you insert something there is first pair part there is second pair part and between first and second pair part you insert something else so that is called insertion sequence sometimes speakers use an insertion sequence that is 
where one adjacency pair comes between the first pair and the second pair part of another adjacency pair in the following example ryan asks his mother mary if he can have a dj for his party she does not reply but by means of an insertion sequence passes the question to her husband john so this is very good example a family is sitting you know and son is talking to his mother and maybe she knows that it is not under her powers to satisfy the son so she moves the question from herself to her husband and this is you know this is this uh, this quite often it happens in pakistani culture too usually here you know fathers they are more powerful as compared to mothers and financially particularly men you know in pakistan they are given preference they are given you know <laughs> power authority and usually they make the decisions in the house but women usually they take care of the household jobs and uh, they make decisions regarding household you know uh, items or things so here ryan who is the son is talking to his mother and she is mary but she does not reply she passes the question to her husband and his father and his name is john and can i have a dj too is 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 that okay mary john john what can he have a dj ryan because you won't be spending much on food so i thought so he knows his father is quite miser conjuice huh and usually you know in pakistan too fathers they are quite conjuice so <laughs> because ryan knew the nature of his father he did not ask a question to his father directly he involved his mother in it and asked the question to mary and then mary you know she knew that she cannot decide about the financial issues so she uh, brought the situation to her husband and ryan says because you won't be spending much on food so i thought john well how much does a dj cost yeah i have got to find out so still he has got to find out that how much he ne needs on dj so here there is an insertion sequence ryan question was can i have a dj so mary did not tell him whether he can have dj or he cannot have dj so instead of giving the answer she inserted the word john and took the matter to her husband that is john and then what can he have a dj because you won't be spending much all this is insertion sequence now your job your task is to see in urdu language okay analyze this how do we insert different kinds of sequences in our organized talk i hope it is clear and then we move to the next topic that is called discourse markers this is very important topic and usually i ask my students to do their researches on discourse markers how do people how do teachers how do parents how do you know uh, lecturers judges doctors clients they make use of these discourse markers whether in spoken discourse or written discourse so you can do your researches in this area okay you can collect the data from the essays of the students from the uh, stories of the students and you can see that how they are employing these discourse markers okay discourse markers shifrin or fraser they have written books on them are just items in spoken discourse which act as sign posts for discourse coherence so they are the sign posts words like gosh wow acha words like you know however moreover in fact indeed so they have got different kinds of uses and they do not have just one use even the word acha 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 so every time you know you change your posture you change your facial expressions the meanings of the word acha changes so same is the case 
word like you know now oh so at length he has discussed the word o oh, that in three or four different situations how the word o oh is telling us that it has got different meanings this includes interjection such as o oh, conjunction such as but adverbs such as now and lexical phrases such as you know they can be at the beginning middle or end of an utterance so there is no hard and fast rule that they should come in the beginning they can come in the middle they can come at the end but usually what i have observed americans usually put however moreover at the end of the sentence and britishers usually in the beginning of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence but anyways let's see i don't know we need to carry out research about pakistani students okay we need to collect the data and see what they do they can be at the beginning middle or end of the utterance and can serve both an anaphoric reference pointing back and cataphoric reference pointing forward in the discourse o can be a marker of information management where it indicates an emotional state o can have different meanings let's see how he discusses the word o jack was that a serious picture oh gosh yes so here o is showing the emotional state of the speaker b o can also initiate a self repair self repair as in the example we just read girl oh a woman so the person took the self initiative and self repaired him uh, himself o can also initiate self repair there was a whole bunch of oath i was about oh younger than bro oh i was about maybe joe's age 16 and it can act as other initiated repair as well how about oh, uh, how about the one death of a salesman well that was a show sure oh that was a movie too so this is how at length okay brian poultry discusses different kinds of discourse markers and we need to understand that how do people they use different discourse markers in urdu language and what are those discourse markers now it is your job okay to understand them to read about them and to do a little bit of you know research on them so that's we come to the end of you know uh, this chapter as well the the last one is criticism on conversation analysis and so far as the criticism is concerned you know i have talked about the issues in conversation analysis so the issues are basically the criticism on conversation analysis so issues are criticism is that in conversation analysis we have got the data from the conversation how people are interacting how they are talking about a different topic okay and the criticism is issue is that we are not collecting the data with the help of interviews we are not collecting the data with the help of questionnaires okay so people they you know raise questions against conversation analysis but now it is your job to read it i have told you and then there are certain answers shared by brian portridge read them to okay and before i end let me summarize so today i had two lectures with you and we have tried to understand what is conversation analysis i gave you a little bit of its history that it started in 1960s and 70s in america garfinkel goffman and harvey sacks they were the pioneers and they took the data from suicide prevention center and they analyzed the data okay and then they categorized that how our spoken discourse is structured they talked about opening of the conversation closing of the conversation turn taking feedback repair self repair other repair preference organization aj sensi peers and in the end we have talked about criticism on conversation analysis i hope you have enjoyed my lecture 
and if you have any question you can come on our LMS inshallah this month and then we can have question and answer session thank you very much